Why do we have to go to church? Why do we have to pray? Why do we pray this way? Why can I wear earrings or nose ring or, or anything that I would like to? Why not, why, why not put a tattoo or things like that? Happy Tuesday, guys. Happy Tuesday. This is, again, another video for a message to parents where we're talking about why young adults are leaving church. So, this is part number four, and we have two answers. Number one is not answering questions. So, parents, if you wonder why your child left the church at a certain age, it might be because it might be because you didn't answer questions. What does that mean? That means when your child asks you a question, for instance, why do we have to go to church? Why do we have to pray? Why do we pray this way? Why can I wear earrings or nose ring or, or anything that I would like to? Why not, why, why not put a tattoo or things like that? And you choose not to answer that question? Then, yes, they're going to leave. Um, because what it does is it leaves a frustration in the child, which might not be shown right away, but when they get older, that frustration builds in, builds in, and then one day that child leaves, and you wonder what happened. So, yes, do your best to answer every question that they can have. I do understand, and I do believe that there's an age gap where the child should just obey what the parent says, which I totally agree. But this does an age period where the child becomes more aware of reality and ask questions, you need to start answering those questions. Yes, there's an age period where a child should not be directed by do this, do that, but if you do this, it will be this, 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 instead of do this. That age period, parents, I would say is between the ages of 13 through 19 or to 20. Mostly is their teenage year where they're going to have a bunch of questions. And if you just say, well, do this, instead of explaining to them why they, why they should do this, then you're leading them in the wrong way. The second reason is, and that I hate it so much. You, since you were a little kid, this is what we've been doing. And I could give my own personal experience with that because that happened to me as well. But I'm not speaking in general terms. When you, parent, tell your child, well, we've been doing this since you were a little kid, what that tells the child is they're not supposed to come up with their own way of worshipping. And that is... I don't want to say wicked or evil, but it's bad. So if the child cannot have his or her personal experience with Christ, where he can worship Christ the way he or she is comfortable, then there's no point of him or her worshiping Christ. If you are going to teach your child to listen or to obey to your tradition, which you have said, which I'm, I'm okay with that. You as a parent wanted to bring up your child a certain way and you you did your let's say, de um, devotional morning a certain way or when it's Sabbath time and it's Friday night, which is Sabbath, or and then you want to do your Sabbath opening a certain way. That is great because you want to teach your child that those principles. But when the child gets to a certain age and wants to do things differently than what you did, and you're telling that child, you are not allowed to do that because this is how we've been doing it since you were a little kid, you basically tell the child, you cannot have your own method of worshiping Christ, but our method. And that is going to drive your child quickly out of church. Because if I can do it my own way, then there's no point for me to worship Christ at all. So guys, parents, parents, don't forget that. Food for thought.